Today, we're going to talk about subsurface scattering in Unreal and Unity. Let's go! Before we jump into the game engines, it's important to know what subsurface scattering is and how it works. If you stand in a dark room and hold a bright flashlight behind your hand, you'll see the effects of subsurface scattering. The light from the flashlight is going into your skin, bouncing around and then coming out in various places. The light gets scattered and takes on the tint of the inside of your hand. This is subsurface scattering. When we render regular opaque objects, we start with light coming into the surface. The light hits the surface and bounces off. Light that gets reflected in a focused direction is often called specular, while light that scatters in all directions is called diffuse. However, when the surface we're rendering is semi-transparent or translucent, the light can also enter the material instead of just bouncing off. The light that goes into the material scatters around inside and comes out in different places instead of reflecting from one specific point. Depending on the thickness of the material, some of the light may even pass through and come out the other side. This is called transmitted light. So when we talk about subsurface scattering, we're talking about both the scattered light that comes out on the lit side of the object and also the transmitted light that comes out on the opposite side of the object. All right, now let's jump into Unreal and I'll show you how the editor supplies you with three different methods of simulating subsurface scattering. And then I'll talk about the same thing in Unity. Here we are in Unreal and we have three different methods for creating subsurface scattering. We're going to go over these in the order of cheapest to most expensive in terms of rendering performance. The one on the right over here is called pre-integrated and it's made to be as inexpensive as it can be uh, while still providing some nice looking uh, skin, for example. So let's take a look at a shader that's created using the pre-integrated method. All right, here's our shader. And the thing that makes this unique is if we select our root node here and come over here to shading model, you can see that it's set to pre-integrated skin. So this is the option that you'd want to select if you're going to create skin on a mobile device or if performance was a major concern. So the way this works is you pass a color into the base color. You give it a nice roughness value. You give it an opacity value, a normal map, and then a subsurface color. Now this base color and subsurface color can also use textures as well. So you can paint uh, the color of the skin on the surface and the color of the skin under the surface. Uh, this normal is used uh, to create a nice pattern of uh, bumpiness on the surface. You can see that I've found a, a nice normal map that looks like skin. And the one tricky thing that's not completely obvious about using this uh, pre-integrated shader is this opacity value. So if I give this opacity a value of one, we're basically turning off the effect. So if you come over here to the editor, you can see that the shadow cast is now black. And if we look at the back, it's completely black. So giving it an opacity value of one uh, turns off the skin effect and giving an opacity value of zero turns it on. It's basically saying this, it, it's kind of like controlling the depth of the skin. So uh, zero is as transparent as it can be. And then one is as opaque as it can be. And so the light, instead of going into the surface is just uh, bouncing off right off the surface. So if you want the maximum amount of skin effect, you set the opacity to zero. And if you want it to be uh, not translucent, you set the opacity to one. Okay, and then finally, this subsurface color here controls what color the object is on the inside. And I've set it to kind of a dark red here uh, to simulate the color of the blood inside the hand uh, that tints the light as it goes in. Now, as you can see, this might be a little bit too 
too red. If we move this object around here so that we're casting more of a shadow, you can see in shadow, this object is going to be this bright red color. So I might want to turn this down and just maybe make it a little bit darker and maybe a little bit less saturated. Yeah, something like that. So when I save it, my shadows won't be quite so bright blood red. So uh, the subsurface color is what you can use to control the color of the, the shadows and also, well, uh, the pre-integrated model doesn't have much transmittance. It doesn't really allow the light to go through. Uh, it's mostly just about the way the skin looks on the lit side of the object. All right, the next shader that we're gonna look at is just simply called Subsurface. And it's this one right here. And we'll switch over to a shader that's created using that. So if I select my root node here and then pick the shading model, we're using the subsurface shading model here. Now this is really similar to the pre-integrated skin shading model uh, with just one main difference. You can see again I have my skin color, the base color here, and I have my subsurface color here. These two colors can both use textures to define them if you want. Um, I have my roughness again and my opacity. And between pre-integrated skin and subsurface, Opacity works the same. If I set this opacity value to one, it's kind of like turning off the subsurface effect. You can see that now it's showing 100% of this base color texture and it's not blending any of this subsurface color in. If I come around to the back, you can see it's just completely dark back here except right on the very edges, you can kind of make out a little bit of light there around the edge. Um, but basically I've turned off the subsurface scattering with my opacity set to one. So if I want to turn this back on, set this to zero and hit save. So this opacity value kind of acts as um, how opaque or transparent the object is. And the more transparent, the more of that skin value that I get. Now, the one area where this subsurface shader is really nice is in transmittance. It's really good at uh, showing you what it looks like when light passes through the surface. So if I come around here behind and look at this, you can see that the light source, which is coming from this direction here, is passing through the object and getting tinted inside. And you can see the light really nicely being transmitted through the surface and showing up behind. So subsurface is really good uh, for creating lighting effects where you want the light to pass through the object and show up on the other side. Uh, kind of like that flashlight example I talked about where the light is passing through your hand and uh, out the other side of your skin. Okay, so these two effects here, the pre-integrated skin and the subsurface are fairly cheap to calculate, um, but let's move on to a third effect that's a little bit more expensive, um, but if you need really nice skin, it's probably worth it. So here's our third shader that we're gonna look at today. This is called the subsurface profile shader. So if I switch here to, or if I pick the uh, root node, and pick subsurface profile here. Uh, you can see that I've got this shader set to the subsurface profile shading model. Now, the unique thing about the subsurface profile is that it's doing its lighting calculations in screen space. So it's kind of like a post-process effect that's happening. And when I pick subsurface profile here, you can see that it's exposed this slot here for a subsurface profile asset. So I have a picker here where I can select which profile I want to use. And this profile looks like this. So you can see that it has a whole bunch of settings here that control um, the various aspects of the skin. So I have a subsurface albedo color. This is basically kind of like the subsurface color that I was defining before, but there are a lot of different controls like world unit scale. Let, let's take a look, actually, let's take a closer look here 
you can see that my object is kind of blurry looking, especially if I come around here to the side, you can see the light is shining through and it's getting scattered here in the back. And the nice thing about this is um, the diffuse light is blurred, but the specular light is nice and sharp. So you can see the light uh, that's bouncing directly off my specular shading here is nice and sharp and you can see the the nice um, shape of my normal map uh, but as soon as the reflected light is uh, moved away uh, the diffuse color here is fairly blurry and that's because of that subsurface scattering that's happening so the reflected light is bouncing off directly but the diffuse light is actually going into the surface bouncing around on the inside and coming out in random directions you can see the light from this direction coming in, hitting the surface, getting scattered around, and some of it is coming out the backside here. Now I have some really nice controls for how this effect works. For example, this world unit scale here, uh, when it's set to one, that means the unit scale is a meter. But if I set it to 0 0.1, which is the default, that makes uh, the scale significantly smaller. So now you can see uh, the light is scattering a lot less than it was, and I can make out more details on the surface here. So when the scale is small, I get more diffuse detail and less blurriness on the surface, but when the scale is large, it makes it as if the object is tiny and I'm getting significantly more scattering. Now, one thing that you might notice here is with a really high number for a scale, my effect kind of breaks down and gets really grainy looking. And that's because there are a limited number of samples that can be used. Uh, and so when the samples have to go really deep into the surface, uh, it kind of breaks down and get, gets this grainy value. So you probably don't want to go much higher than a world unit scale of one here, uh, unless you're going to be uh, really far away from the object, I guess, uh, because there is a limited number of samples that can be taken and uh, it turns really grainy. So by default, this value is set to 0 0.01. And it gives you a really nice approximation of uh, human Caucasian skin. Now, if you were going to create uh, other races, for example, you'd want to set these values to something different uh, for African uh, or Latino skin. You'd have different values here. And the nice thing is you can create one skin shader and then for each material instance of the shader, you can provide a different uh, subsurface profile here. You can expose this at the material instance level and then swap these in and out. So various characters in your project can have uh, different subsurface scattering profiles for their skin, or you could make a separate profile for a waxy object like a candle, for example. Um, and all of these different profiles uh, can apply different appearance, appearances to your objects. One other thing that I need to mention about the subsurface profile version uh, of subsurface scattering is the opacity value. So Epic has tried really hard to confuse us. Uh, with subsurface pre-integrated, you need to set the opacity value to zero. Same thing with the subsurface shader. But with the subsurface profile shader, in order to turn it on, instead of setting it to zero, you need to set it to one. So this value is actually inverted from the other two. And if you want to turn the skin shading off, the subsurface uh, effects off, you set the opacity to zero and that turns the effect off. You can see here uh, the diffuse is not uh, blurred anymore. It's nice and sharp and we're not getting any subsurface scattering effects with our value set to zero. But if we set it to one, now you can see that that effect gets turned back on. So if you're using the subsurface profile version for subsurface scattering, um, make sure that you have inverted values for this opacity from the other two. So if you have a texture, for example, you'd have to flip the values of the texture uh, to be opposite. Um, or one minus the values for the other two. Uh, so just one more thing to keep in mind.
All right, one last look here. So in Unreal, we have three different methods of creating subsurface scattering. We have the pre-integrated method that's designed to be inexpensive. We have the subsurface scattering method that is especially good at creating transmittance effects. And we have the subsurface scattering profile, uh, which is very realistic and kind of expensive, um, but also creates uh, the very nicest, best looking results. All right, so that's how you create subsurface scattering in Unreal. Let's take a look at the same kind of feature in Unity. All right, here we are in Unity, and you can see that I've got an example here that's similar to the ones that we were looking at in Unreal. Uh, we have this shader uh, that's called Subsurface Scattering, and you can see that the light is going into the surface and bouncing around and getting scattered inside, and it creates effects like this where instead of the shadows being nice and sharp, they're blurry kind of with this reddish edge to show that the light is going inside and getting bounced around and then getting tinted uh, with the interior color of the skin. And if I go over here to my diffusion profile, I can change this world scale value to kind of control how much of that is happening. So if I set this to one, uh, this is the default scale. So I'm going to be getting uh, effects that are happening uh, at regular real world scale. But then if I reduce this to like 0 0.1, for example, um, now you can see that um, it's as if the object were significantly smaller and there's more scattering happening. So we can get a really nice looking effect here and make the object look extremely translucent uh, if we reduce this world scale value down. Well, let me go back and start uh, a little bit more from the beginning. Uh, if we take a look at the shader that I've got applied to this cube here, you can see that it's a lit material and the material type is set to subsurface scattering. When I set it to subsurface scattering, it exposes several options here. In addition to the regular base color, uh, normal, smoothness, etc., cetera, um, I have some other options down here uh, for subsurface mask and transmission mask. Now what this is doing is this mask here is going to mask out the light that's getting scattered and then bouncing out on the lit side. And then this mask here is gonna mask out the transmission that's coming through on the dark side when the light is actually passing all the way through the object. Then I also have a value here called thickness, which helps to control how thick or thin the object is. Uh, if I'm creating a human head, for example, I might want to make the ear tips have a value of zero for thickness and the same about the uh, same with the tip of the nose so that I get more transmission in those areas uh, whereas most of the areas on the face would have a thickness value of one so I use thickness uh, at zero in really thin parts of the object and at one uh, at most parts of the object so this kind of controls how much of this transmission is happening all right, and then the most important part of the shader here is the diffusion profile. You can see that I've got it set to translucent right here. This diffusion profile is very similar to the subsurface profile that I was using in Unreal. So you can see that I've got it selected here and the options show up over here on the right side. Um, I have my inspector set to show me the settings for translucent, uh, my diffusion profile here. So you can see that I have settings that apply to scattering, to subsurface scattering only, and then to transmission only. So the transmission only settings are applying to the light coming through the back side of the object, whereas the scattering settings are applying to the light that is bounced around and then come, comes out in, on the lit side of the object. Uh, the same thing with these two previews here. This preview represents light coming out on the lit side, and this preview down here, this gradient, represents what the light does as it hits the surface and goes in. So you can see that uh, my value here on the back side is black, which means none of my light is going to be passing through. But then if I change this thickness remap value, if I decrease this, you can watch this gradient down here, and you can see it looks as if the light is penetrating deeper and deeper into the object. 
And so if I turn this down, now you can see I'm gonna get some transmittance coming here on the back side of the object because the light is hitting, going all the way through the object and coming out on the back. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at our scene and see what that looks like. If we select our object here and swing around to the back side, if we look at the light source through the object, you can see how bright it is, is here on the back because the sunlight is shining directly through it uh, and coming out the other side. Uh, so if I pick my object here, I can actually uh, change this in real time. Uh, I can adjust the thickness remap of my object to control how much transmittent light is happening uh, and how much light is actually just getting absorbed and not coming out the other side. So I can get a good preview here on this uh, gradient and I can also see a real-time preview in my scene for controlling uh, how much of that light is passing directly through my object. All right, and then we already took a look at it, but we can also use this world scale value to control how much of this uh, subsurface scattering is happening or how deep the light is actually going into the surface and getting bounced around before it comes back out. All right, so that's how subsurface scattering works in both Unreal and Unity. I hope this has been useful for you. If you have questions about these systems, go ahead and post those in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something and that you come back next week to see more advanced shader techniques. Have a great week, everybody.